you're right in Cleveland. I would love to move back. I hate, I hate Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> no city can exist without people. And Cleveland has lost more than half its population since the 1950s, when nearly a million people lived in the city. Many moved to nearby suburbs, but even so, the population in the region has remained flat for decades. Given all of its problems, you might wonder why anyone would want to live in Cleveland. Well, for one thing, Clevelanders enjoy the kinds of big-ticket entertainment options you can only find in large cities. In addition to the Browns, Cavaliers, and Indians, and attractions like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Cleveland has a lot to offer people with a taste for high culture. The culture well, I mean, we have a tremendous orchestra. I mean, uh, one of the best in the world. Uh, the Art Museum is, is, is phenomenal. I mean, Playhouse Square is the largest contiguous theater center in America outside Broadway. These cultural attractions are great, but can they really do anything to help revitalize Cleveland? We get it wrong. We think that it's the cultural amenities that drive the prosperity, when really it's the prosperity that drives the cultural amenities. It's true. The orchestra, museum, and theaters in Cleveland are artifacts of an era when Cleveland was an industrial powerhouse and threw off tons of cash. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the sports complexes, on the other hand, were built with hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars and sweetheart deals during Cleveland's economic decline. These amenities are not the fruits of a vibrant economy. They're monuments to the empty promises of Cleveland politicians. And while the Cavaliers provide a great entertainment option for tourists from the suburbs, you can't judge a city's health by looking at its basketball team. I mean, LeBron James is not going to save Cleveland. So what else does Cleveland have going for it? Well, there's no denying that many people absolutely love the city. In fact, we found some interesting folks who were so charmed by Cleveland that they decided to move here. In a past life, Les Roberts was a Hollywood producer and writer for shows like The Hollywood Squares and The Lucy Show. He came to Cleveland for the first time in 1987. And I didn't know anything about Cleveland when I got here. I knew about Jim Brown and Bob Feller and the river burning. Uh, but no. I, had, I, had no, I had no clue uh, what the city was all about. And I absolutely, I was here for like 10 days and I fell in love with Cleveland. Les moved to Cleveland a few years later and has been writing novels featuring Cleveland-based detective Milan Djokovic ever since. Taj Mahelich, a professional BMX rider who's lived in Austin for the past 15 years, recently decided to relocate to Cleveland. From the first time I came here, I got this really strong feeling that this could be home and it's, it's a cool place. So what exactly is so cool about Cleveland? We asked the best experts we could find, the people who live here. What's great oh, about Cleveland? It's amazing. Okay. Have you been downtown? <laughs> We're right on the lake. We have great landscapes, we have great architecture. There's a lot of industrial parts of Cleveland that have gone out of business, and so it's sort of like um, an urban jungle. There's a lot of opportunity and potential here. There's something that feels lived in here, like a, like a warm pair of jeans, you know? Cleveland's a small, big town. I mean, big enough so that everybody doesn't know your business, yet small enough so you still have friends of a lifetime. It's a great place to raise a family, it really is. Cleveland is also an incredibly affordable place to live. Because really, you work 20 hours a week in Cleveland, you can pay your rent. And you have a lot of time to do your art, and your space to rent is cheap. What do homebuyers get for their money in Cleveland? We asked Katie Brailler, a local real estate agent. I'm in front of a beautiful home in Cleveland, Ohio. This house has beautiful hardwood flooring, beautiful kitchen, four bedroom. It's only $132,000. That's a lot of house for the money, but for Clevelanders willing to take a risk and do some major renovations, they're virtually giving the houses away. Uh, I'd like to show you a home that is $8,400. Great investor's dream right here. And young professionals in Cleveland can get a really great downtown condo at a price that will make people who live in other big cities green with envy. We're in the common area right now, which is just gorgeous. I'm going to send you up to a unit that's a two-bedroom, two-bath, that's 279.9. It's a little over 1,200 square feet. Uh, it's got granite, it's got stainless steel, uh, hardwood flooring, and great views. Cleveland's also a diverse city with lots of great ethnic neighborhoods. The people who live in these neighborhoods are the descendants of immigrants who originally came to Cleveland when the economy was thriving. On any so, given weekend in the summer, you can throw a rock and hit two different, you know, the Polka Festival. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Greek yeah. Festival. Yeah. I love the neighborhoods. I love the people. I love the, uh, the food. The restaurants in Little Italy, if you haven't been there, you 
must go there. Clevelanders looking for live music can find cool jazz at the Nighttown Jazz Club on the east side and great blues and a working class vibe at the Parkview nightclub on the west side of town. Tell us about the Parkview nightclub. What's the history of the Parkview? Oh, a lot of history. This bar's been around since Prohibition and before. This whole neighborhood is littered with uh, speakeasies, you know, the remains of speakeasies. So this, this bar was in a kind of a crazy neighborhood. One of our favorite joints in Cleveland is a one-of-a-kind place called the Velvet Tango Room. You're at the Velvet Tango Room, which is a very unique cocktail lounge in Cleveland. And the, uh, the mission of the Velvet Tango Room is to uh, keep alive, burning bright, the flame of uh, cocktail culture. Classic cocktails, oh. not cocktails that taste like gummy bears. Mm -hmm. We're the torchbearers of, of what a classic cocktail should be. Cleveland also has hidden gems like Ray's Indoor Mountain Bike Park, the only one of its kind in the whole world. It was a dream of mine for years, and then I had an opportunity, and I found some space, and just threw the dice, spent my life savings. Since the first time I've come here, Ray's has been what I think just is the happiest place on bikes that I've ever been around. Uh, everyone's riding. You have three-year-old kids, to old men, and moms, and you know, dads, and pros and it's great. It's really worked out really well and it's all about just having fun. And as anyone who's visited Cleveland will tell you, Clevelanders are very good people. The great part is, is the way the people treat you. You know, it's like very friendly. Everybody's happy, go lucky. Okay. You know? Um, maybe the most important thing that I like about Cleveland is the people and the people are down to earth and um, they'll tell you like it is and they have a good time. Clevelanders certainly know how to have a good time on St. Patrick's Day. But when the party's over, the city empties out again. Are there any signs of a turnaround? Not really. In fact, according to a recent study, 60% of Ohio's college students plan to leave the state when they graduate. Many of them will move to cities like Houston. When you look at Houston, you say, why do people go there? Well, they don't go for the topography. They don't go for the climate. Um, they go to Houston for opportunity. That's what it's all about. All great cities are aspirational. They are places where people go because things could be better for them. I would like everybody in Cleveland to have like rich kid syndrome, where they feel guilty you know, that they had all these opportunities and they have to go to Nicaragua now to do some work in the summer when they're off from college to make up for it. In order to compete with other cities, Cleveland must deal with its most fundamental issues. For starters, the city needs to fix the schools, make government more efficient, and create a more business-friendly environment. I think the city could be conceivably a lot better, but I think it's going to have to let go a lot of, of a lot of its older dysfunctional ideas. This is one of the problems that almost all these old industrial cities have had. A very concentrated um, decision-making process, very bureaucratic. Well, I think one thing that the city needs to do is, is, is back off a little bit and recognize that, that real sustainable economic development has to be organic and has to occur bottom-up. At the end of the day, city officials need to let go of their bureaucratic inclinations and find ways to make Cleveland the kind of city where people are free to pursue their own versions of the American dream. It, it, re, it needs to be a freer city than it is today. It'll work out on its own, I'm telling you, that Adam Smith Invisible Hand is a really good thing. There's nothing to be afraid of. Thank you.